We finished up last time talking about use case bodies and use case bodies are a one great detailed way of describing um, the process with which an actor and a system interact. They're really good, they're really detailed, but if you have a lot of them it is quite difficult to see how the sequences follow and they are really quite tiresome to read if you have to if you think of something like a complicated website with lots of possible interactions it can just lead to a huge mess. So what we have are two alternative ways of uh, dealing with this kind of information in a more graphical manner. The first of these is a sequence diagram which is what we're going to talk about now. So you can imagine these sequence or activity diagrams <clears throat> and our use case bodies as complementary tools for describing a use case. The difference is that an activity diagram deals with an entire use case and all the possible success and failure scenarios, whereas a system sequence diagram only deals with the main success scenario. So um, let's go back to our example of withdrawing money using our visa. Here is our main success scenario use case body. If we want to see it as a sequence diagram, it looks like this. So we start off with our primary actor, our card holder in this case, on the left hand side at the top. And we've got our system, our ATM, at the top of that second line in the middle of the page. Um, what you can see is the steps from our Sorry, the steps from our use case body uh, appear as lines on the diagram and the arrow shows the direction of information flow. So when the user inserts the card they're providing information to the ATM, when the ATM um, uh, asks the card holder for their PIN they're asking for information and we simply follow through the use case drawing arrows between um, the relevant actors. If we have an additional actor like an authorization, they appear out to the right hand side and the more additional actors our sequence diagram requires, the more things we will have out to the right hand side. As we move down the page, we're actually moving forwards in time and this lets us get a really clear idea of what order things need to happen in. You'll notice um, at the center and the two thirds of the way down the page there, there's a check amount and that doesn't connect to any other actors. That's because it is a step process that the system needs to follow, but it doesn't require input or information from any other actor. So it's fine to have an internal arrow like that if it requires the system to do something, but it doesn't require input from any other actors. And that's it. We filled in our sequence diagram. Um, all of these steps that you can see on here map back to that main success scenario from the use case body that we saw in the earlier slides. They're very useful in particular for understanding sequential tasks like network protocols, but they don't show alternative or error scenarios. In case of those, we'll use activity diagrams and they are the topic of the next video.